Oh, so you're 2% Native American? Name all the American tribes. Before they owned all of the casinos in the world, Native Americans actually had some insanely overpowered features in EU4. My name is Ludi, and today we'll be doing our special Cherokee video. If we get 6,900 likes, we'll be doing an Aztecs guide. So we've chosen the nation of Cherokee because of its position, and because of this, it actually has a lot of opportunities for expansion and developing its nation very early on in the game. There's a new system in 1.31 for the Native Americans where you actually get tribal development based on a few things such as reforms and the grazing lands that you have, but most importantly, you get your very own government reforms that are absolutely broken. Aside from that, the most broken thing about these natives is the totemist religion, which can give you up to 10 aspects based on your ancestors. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set our military points as the main focus. We're gonna start recruiting a few extra thousand troopers here, and we're gonna make our leader a general. We want all of our leaders to die as soon as possible, because once they die, we can use their actual skill here as one of our aspects for the religion. So for for example, if we get a plus 10 discipline trait for this guy, we can get that as our aspect and we can keep that forever. The first thing you want to do is you want to set your rivals here and I actually recommend you set rivals whatever nations are closer to you so you have easy expansion paths. Essentially, I've rivaled the nations that pretty much rivaled me, and we'll wait for our troops to get recruited first. We also will get some alliances. These guys seem like a decent alliance, and we can even start our very own federation. Don't forget to also send a scornful insult and a regular insult to your rivals to get a bit of extra power projection. Welp, we were too late. Actually, the uh, Etoans here joined another federation of Satapo. So, that means we gotta get somebody else in our federation, but until that point, we're gonna migrate to our second province here this is our tribal land we're gonna use 50 mil points to get there that means the previous land is still ours and we've migrated here so that we can actually start going into other provinces couple months have passed and we can now go over to saluda the reason we want to do this is because raising on a province that belongs to another tribe gives us an extra 0.10 tribal development per month which is a massive amount it is literally five times more than we would be getting from grazing in our own lands over here. So now that we are already here, what we're gonna do up next is we're gonna start getting these two missions, boosting us up to 2.37, which is actually the highest morale in the new world. Oh my god, unbelievable. Yes, also Cherokee gets its own mission tree that is surprisingly quite entertaining. So, up next what we're gonna do is we're gonna recruit the free company here. You didn't think we're not gonna recruit the free company, did you? And we're gonna wait for a couple of months after we recruit them so they get their morale up. Now that they've been recruited, what we're gonna do is we're gonna attack these guys and we're gonna go for the Tribal Feud CB since they have a lot of lands. If you click on Diplo's screen, you can see all of this is actually Kofi Tachequi land. And we want it for ourselves. So let's go. Declare your Wario. Two years sieging a primitive fort, seriously? Well, as punishment, we fully annexed all of their lands. We can't really take anything from these guys, but we're gonna cancel all of their rivals and take a little bit of cash. 15 prestige is a massive deal in the early game. And it also means we can do another mission, the principal people that gives us minus 10 advisor costs and diplo rep, which scales even better because we already have minus 10 advisor costs from our traditions. That means we actually can afford advisors now. Now I'm gonna go for two of these guys Diplo rep and morale of armies. We're gonna take the coastline here as well as a little bit of cash, whatever we can take. Noise. Now we've expanded our tribal lands by this much without having to spend our valuable military and so on points. Also remember to siege down provinces with the mercenary company so you don't waste your main army's actual manpower pool. Now that we expanded our lands a little bit, we need to get some more mana points and it's gonna be a little bit hard, but we have an up our sleeves. Namely, we can declare humiliation wars on our rivals. We can even call in their allies if we want to. Let's go. 
We positioned our army strategically right next to them so we can wipe them out as soon as the war starts. You can't really get away from me, boys. You can't really get away from me. Noise. Now we can just follow them up here and make sure they don't get away from us. Koweta has fallen and we can now piece them out. We're obviously going to go for some cash as well as cancel whatever rivalries and so on we can cancel. When it comes to Ishishi here, we're just going to go for the show of strength, which is available because we declared a humiliation war and which will give us 100 of each mana points. That Yago, we just got an extra 300 mana points. Faux free, boys, faux free. That also means that we can start attacking other nations now and my other rivals here seem to be in a little bit of a pickle as they are at war with each other so if I attack these guys it's gonna be a very easy war colon etowa and it is wartime boys Take note, a lot of the times in these wars, it's basically going to be a who sieges whose capital faster sort of competition. We were lucky with the Cherokee here. We're going to take all of their cash and as well, of course, cancel rivalries and whatever we can get. Noise. Now we can just come back here and kill off the uh, Lenape troops before they do any actual damage whilst our ally is sieging their capital. Noise. There you go. This should be a fairly easy war. We're going to chase them down so we can actually stack wipe them and piece them out afterwards. A point a new war chief all right there you go that means we should get our first aspect but because this guy only had spy detection i'm not interested in spy detection so i'm not gonna choose my first ancestor just yet maybe this other guy is gonna get a nicer treat he got morale of armies there you go boy so we're gonna get morale of armies plus 10 as our first aspect once this dude dies we couldn't find their army i don't know where it went but because we took this province we have the botanical exports mission available and we're gonna to do that this gives us trade efficiency for a few years and manpower recovery speed and afterwards we can of course piece these guys out we're just gonna take whatever we can money few rivalries canceled and that's pretty much it we apparently can get a new leader what fair enough five six four this guy's even super good and this means we can now get the plus 10 morale of armies it does cost 400 diplo points so keep that in mind but look at this plus 10 morale of armies from here another plus 15 from our missions and we managed to get up to 2.8 morale one more day we passed and now we can do another show of strength against these guys that means we got a 900 military power that also means we can probably do this yes we can and i don't mind Paying a little bit ahead of time with this since it gets me closer to level 3 which is when I can actually start drilling armies and get the 0.50 morale and once we get that we're literally going to be the strongest Native American nation unbeatable and we're going to basically ravage the whole of the new world we can do vision quest 2 and stab up a little bit we can lower the war exhaustion since we have quite a little bit since we've been at war since the start of the game stab cost minus 20 until the end of the game sounds good to me and national unrest minus one sounds great as well now since we have all the mana points and everything we're gonna do a few more wars but in order to do these wars we're gonna have to also migrate a little bit we're gonna start migrating first to kusabo hit the migrate button 50 mil points noise this means we can also add this to our tribal land it's gonna cost us 100 admin but that means this province is always gonna be a part of our land and once we do the last reform of national identity all of these are gonna be be directly owned by us we're gonna have to expand a little bit more in this area go to the south and walk our way through here but until we do that we can attack Kashita which is allied to Koweta and Satapo so not really that much of a challenge once more go for humiliation Buya, let's attack yo also let's make our leader a general since maybe yeah we got three shock pips nice we should be able to win this that was a fairly easy fight and let's chase down their armies oh guess what we can call our beloved allies into this and i will thank you very much also we can do our first government reform and we have three options infantry combat ability reform progress or tribal land cost i actually recommend you go for the reform progress as it means we're going to reform into an actual king them faster or a horde than we otherwise would be able to also we can piece these guys out now we don't really want anything again just doing it for the prestige and actually we can get war reps as well so that's pretty good because whoa another leader died holy snaps 634 okay let's see what trade he's got please be disciplined please be disciplined he has diplo reputation okay fair enough i mean that's not the worst one also why are you guys not doing anything please 
They want to offer me Condoteri for zero ducats. What? Okay, sure, I'll take it, boys. <laughs> nice. Ishiki. These are the guys that we attacked before, isn't it? I guess they really don't like the tribe of uh, Kashiha. Are they rivals? They are. Okay, that makes a, a lot of sense, actually. Let's send our trader to collect in uh, this trade note. We cannot. We cannot send him anywhere. Never mind. Peace deal simulator incoming. And we're going again for the same thing we went with the previous nations. And with Kashida once more, show us strength to get our beloved mana points. Now, before we do anything else, we can also get a second ancestor. And I'm going to go for the construction cost. This guy is actually super good. I really don't mind an extra 20% reduction and construction cost sadly the other two options we have here are spy detection and we don't want to take any of that schnapps before we construct anything we're gonna switch our tribe over to this province now and make it our own tribal land once more noise we also now have 16 development because we've been grazing a lot and because of our amazing grazing we've actually gotten a lot of tribal development as it is now before we do anything else we're also gonna use our available money pool to get the monthly reform progress plus 0 0.10 whilst we wait for this building to finish off we're gonna keep on migrating along the coastline here and making all of these our actual lands all the way till we reach the rich parts of the native land namely this area this is our main focus it is gonna cost us a lot of military and admin points to core up all of this and make it our actual tribal lands but remember after the final reform all of this is ours without having to colonize it or anything of the sorts we migrated and migrated until we reached the nation of Choctaw. these guys want to be our allies actually but i don't want to be their allies instead i want to absolutely wreck them we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the tribal feud cb actually against them as i want to completely wipe them out let's go we're gonna call our beloved ally itua and we're gonna have an easy battle here these guys are actually a settled tribe that means they have the third reform from the beginning and they cannot get tribal lands the way that we can also they barely just started paying for their troops so it should be a bloodbath against them right now as their troops are not fully maintained is that einstein weipen no it's not we don't have the troops for it but it's gonna be uh, close to one after we get back here trying to run away from me sir no you cannot i'm gonna be destroying y'all right now Alrighty, that means we can also focus on their allies now anilko whilst our allies help us out sieging them down. What do you know? Another mission. We got the high income mission. This is going to help us out so much with improving our nation's buildings. Actually, I just realized these are the Ishishi, not my allies. My allies were just randomly sitting in this area for no reason. Bruh. Also, thank you so much, Ishishi. You've been a great service to me. Cannot believe you've literally wasted your whole time helping me expand. Hey, we got a new war chief. This one's a little bit retarded, but hopefully he gets a nice trait please let it be discipline and this discipline holy shit guys we got 10 discipline so once this guy dies we can get our third aspect as 10 percent discipline unbelievable time for bye bye olko and of course same as all the other guys noise now we got an oh what our chief dies every single time we do a peace deal that is weird is that actually intentional I don't know but in any case look at this guys look at this guys plus 10 discipline so we already have plus 10 morale of armies and plus 10 discipline and if this guy also gives us no he didn't give us discipline advisor cost still pretty darn good let's fully annex these boys now noise that means we got this as our tribal land and we can bring our boys here we are in fact gonna gun for the nation of Wichita which has a lot of actual tribal lands that we can just take from them without having to waste our own points we can go for third reform now and i highly recommend you go for seasonal travel that gives you minus 25 migration cost and tribal development growth plus 0.02 with that in mind i want you guys to realize something every single time we get a border with another native nation we actually can declare a humiliation war against them even though they're not our rivals so that is why I've been able to get so many mana points and I'm still able to continuously get them. Be careful, however, some alliance blocks might be quite big and you might struggle against them. 
After you get a sizable amount of land, you really want to start focusing on reforming your land and building up the appropriate buildings. I'm saving right now for minus 50 advisor cost, which together with my minus 10 advisor cost from here, minus 10 from the mission, and minus 20 from the next aspect I'm going to get, I'm basically going to get minus 90% advisor cost in 1460 something. Bruh. One more vital thing to realize is that whenever you you're just sitting down recommend sitting in your rivals tribal land so you get more reform progress and you don't need to actually have your capital next to another nation to be able to declare war on them you just need to have one of your tribal lands that means that i can attack anyone here that borders any of this land i highlight right now for example i'm gonna attack these guys and i'm gonna go for the tribal feud calling my allies on this and I'm gonna take uh, their lands in this war. With the money and the stuff that we got from these guys, we now have enough to build up the advisor cost reduction building. We can also migrate to an adjacent province as our main capital has way too much devastation because we've been grazing there for quite a while now. And I am gonna continue my migration here, make this my tribal land, and migrate into Lipan's area, which has zero devastation, and which gives me more progress. As our fourth reform, we're gonna go for the Codified Power, which gives us minus two national unrest, and we also finish building the plus 10 land force limit unique building, which means we can get up to 20,000 units, and we're gonna go a little bit over our forest limit that also means that we can take on a larger coalition blocks such as wichita's 35,000 strong alliance block now here's where it gets really interesting guys because these nations actually start off with a tier 3 reform you might have noticed kado already is a kingdom not only them but everybody here is already reformed and can embrace the institutions that means we can push back the colonizers because everybody knows Pekaha is the first colonial nation. In the meanwhile, we are keep on improving our situation here and grazing 39 development and rising from grazing into other people's lands. We managed to make a federation with the Pawnee and guess what, we got our first federation cohesion level which means we can choose a few of these special interactions i am of course gonna go for the tribal development growth which is really extremely great to boost up your nation's overall development testament to this is the nation of patazzi which has 51 development because of the federation growth we have reached the final level and we can start reforming into either a theocracy republic monarchy or a horde but before we do that we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the level 5 idea for the simple fact that we can go for the indigenous idea set which is the most overpowered idea set in EU4. Why is that? You get minus 5 dev cost reduction, attrition for enemies, morale of armies with manpower, idea cost minus 10 and war score minus 20% but most importantly when you mix this in with exploration you get discipline and morale of armies or with innovativeness you get dev cost minus 5 and with admin dev cost minus 10%. This idea set is ridiculous. And after we've gotten the idea set, we're going to become of course a horde, which means that all of these lands here are actually going to become our full integral rather than just settled lands. And guess what? We kept indigenous ideas. We're also going to go for horde ideas, which are once more insanely overpowered. Not to mention, we can start spawning in the institution now. And we can also go for the reforms here. Religious unity, this one, and raising power. So whenever we raise provinces, we're getting a ton of military admin and diplo points to fully adopt and spawn in the institutions quite early on. This also means we can do the mission improve capital and a few other missions. Remember though that the province where you kept your capital when you reformed is going to be your actual capital and you don't have the indigenous mechanics anymore so you lose all that development we basically went from 56 or something development to six but not to fear though our economy is doing super well also don't forget the fact that you are still a totemist nation and just to show you the collection of ancestors that we have right now include morale of armies construction cost reduction discipline plus 10 advisor minus 20 diplo rep plus 2 goods produced plus 20 and we can have four more depending on what kind of 
leaders we get, we can have some insane buffs. But la creme de la creme obviously is the indigenous ideas with horde ideas mixed in with the rest. So don't forget guys, 6,900 likes and we'll do the Aztecs guide. And don't forget to check out my Twitch channel. I would love to see you over on Twitch. I also want to give a very special thank you to all of my patrons and channel members as well as my Twitch subscribers. Thank you so much guys for all the support. I wouldn't be able to make these videos without you.